Life Audio. One of the phrases that comes up this time of year in Christian circles is a word of the year. But you may be thinking, what even is a word of the year or how do I get one? Well, today we're going to dive into that a little bit where I kind of just share some of my own personal experiences and how I handle that because it can really be a guiding principle as we lean into what God wants to do in and through us this year. Stay tuned. After a quick word from our sponsor, we'll dive into today's episode. I pray it's a blessing for you. The exchange of opinions is essential to democracy. But today, many Americans hold radically different views, not just of politics, but of reality itself. Unity Talks, the new podcast from Vanderbilt University's Project on Unity and American Democracy, seeks to reintroduce evidence to the national discourse through conversations with experts on the important issues facing our nation. Co-hosted by John Meacham, Bill Haslam, and Summer Ali, Unity Talks is available wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, I'm Cynthia Garrett, and I'm inviting you to join us on Cynthia Garrett's Girl Club on Life Audio. It's a pretty powerful place where real girls are having real talk about real issues and applying real faith. Hey friends, welcome to the Hearing Jesus podcast. Do you sometimes doubt if you're truly hearing God's voice or if it's really your own? And how do you know the difference? Do you ever struggle to feel confident in your relationship with God and what he says in his word? Do you sometimes feel stagnant or like maybe you hit a wall in your spiritual life? Hey, I'm your host, Rachel Grohl, missionary, author, pastor, and life coach, and I have been there. I too was doubting God's voice in my own life. I felt insecure about my relationship with Him, and I wanted to be obedient to what God was calling me to do, but I wasn't quite sure how to figure out what that was. I felt like I was wasting time trying to figure it out, and I just wanted a way to understand His will for my life. The answer for me was found in the pages of the scriptures, as I learned how to understand what they were actually saying. If you're ready to grow in your faith and to step confidently into the calling God has for you, then join me as we dig deep into God's Word so that you can learn to live out your faith in your everyday life. Hey friends, I'm your host Rachel Grohl, and I'm so excited to be back recording in the studio with you guys. I had taken a bit of a break, as you know, over the holidays, and Man, when you get out of the rhythm, you don't realize how much you crave that regular rhythm of your life uh, until you don't have it for a little bit. And for us, we got stuck in that snowstorm that, well, I guess most of the country had gotten hit by some sort of storm in some sort of way. But because of that, we were traveling and it took us about four days to get home um, with canceled flights and delayed flights and all those kinds of things. So I am so thankful to be at home at my desk in front of my microphone with my life kind of back in the scheduled order of the way the way things typically roll. And if you're just joining us today, yesterday we kind of talked about a little bit of a recap of the things that God has done in and through the podcast, the, a little bit of direction on where we're going. Today's a little bit of a continuation of that, but I want to talk a little bit about this time of year before we jump right back into the Psalm series. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, the Psalm series is essentially we're going through one Psalm a day where I'm sharing some of the background and the history and the culture. And it serves as a devotional for a lot of people. One of the things I always hear is that people do not have time to be in God's word in a way that is um, speaking life into them or, or is relevant to their own lives. And so that's what we're doing in this season as we're going through each of the Psalms. So I pray that that series is a blessing to you. One of the things that I wanted to share about, which was so exciting, is is the stats came in for 2022. And this kind of blew me out of the water. Overall, um, at some point in the year, I was the number, Hearing Jesus was the number three podcast globally. And I, I, like I knew that, but it wasn't until I saw the stats and I saw all of the, the places where we were in the top 10. I mean, there's over 50 countries that I'm looking at right here that we are in the top 10 And it is such a blessing to know that God is using this podcast globally. So if you could continue to pray that God would do what he wants to do in and through this podcast and in and through me and in and through you as a community, I'm so thankful for what I hear, all these testimonies of what God is doing in these relationships that are forming, even in our community Facebook group where I, I'm hands off and God is continuing to, to work on uh, the behalf of his people. It's so amazing to be a part of. 
But today what we're going to talk about is this idea of the word of the year. And it's something that we hear about in Christian circles. We have for, for quite a while. And, you know, I used to hear that and I myself am guilty of just saying, okay, well, what's a word of the year that I want to focus on? And I used to just kind of think that, that the way that that ideally would work was I would just pick a a word like peace or something and then focus on it. And I have done that where I then took that word peace and I, and I researched and I looked up all the scriptures and even journaled all the scriptures about peace. And that's the way I did it for a lot of years. That's the way a lot of people, people do it. But I think my philosophy now is a little bit different based on the experiences that I've had with the Holy Spirit and the way that God has, has used this in my life. And, you know, you don't have to have a word of the year. You don't have to start off the year um, the way, the way that I do, this is just for those of you that may want to, or you're curious about it because we hear a lot about it. But for me, what happens is this time of year is always the time of year where I pray and I set aside time to allow the Holy Spirit to just maybe reveal some of the things that he wants me to focus on throughout the year. And for me, I always do a fast in January. If you've never done a fast, you can go back into our spiritual discipline series we did last year. And we spent a whole week talking about fasting, fasting for spiritual growth. And so I do a fast every January just as a a part of my spiritual rule of life, so to speak. And I pray about the things that, that God may have set before me for that coming year year. It helps me to center myself. It helps me to refocus after, you know, let's be honest, December and the beginning of January are often for a lot of people months and holidays of indulgence. And so for me, it helps me to kind of just get back to the root of my why. Why are we doing the things that we're doing? Also, you know, there's a lot of people do spiritual fasting health fasting, um, emotional things, budget fasting, they don't spend money. It's a way for us to just focus. But I will say, I do not like the word resolutions because we've heard this a thousand times. People make a resolution to go to the gym and by the end of January, you know, they're not even attending the gym and then that, that, um, membership goes wasted. I don't like the word resolutions. Instead, what I like is this idea of resolving, resolving to do what God has already called us to do. We already know. The majority of us already know. If you're listening to this podcast, the reality is, is you likely already know what God has called us to do. As believers, we know that God has called us to live for him. To There's a call to righteousness that we read about in scripture. And so our goal is to focus on him and his word. And perhaps we don't need a resolution. Perhaps we need resolve. For me, like I said, I used to just pick a word and then focus on it. But instead, what happened over time was actually it was like maybe three or four years ago, I was in that place where I was picking a word. I was going to focus on peace. And um, I thought maybe, okay, I'm going to scale back on the things that I'm doing so I can focus on peace in my life. And I was driving to work. I worked at a church at the time. And as I was driving to work, I was praying. and And the Holy Spirit very clearly interrupted my thoughts. And he said, that's your agenda, but what about my agenda? And you know, it's not like peace is not God's agenda. God wants me to have peace in my life for sure. That's why we, he sent Jesus, the Prince of Peace. But when it comes down to it, I was assigning a word to my life and telling God that that's what my agenda was. And instead, what God was calling me to do was to lay down my agenda in favor of his agenda. And even that day, I, I'm I'm typically a pretty ordered person. I have a lot, I wear a lot of hats and I have a lot of responsibilities. And so I typically have a schedule that's pretty packed. I mean, from, from morning till night, I have lots of things going on. And so uh, that day I had a lot of meetings scheduled. And as God is speaking this word over me, I said, you know, in surrender, okay, God, I am surrendering my day to you, my life to you, my heart to you. Do with it what you want to do with it. And that's powerful when we can get to that place. And I will tell you that that day, uh, despite my busy plan for the day, somebody came in to the church office that day that really just needed needed somebody to talk to, somebody to pray with, somebody to support and love and encourage them. And I was able to spend some time with her. And you know what? The rest of the stuff on my agenda did get done. It might have been a different order or a different way I thought it was going to get done. But at the end of the day, I just really 
understood what God meant by that. Like his agenda was for me to spend some time with that girl. And if I was so busy focused on my agenda, I would have missed it. I would have my door shut. I would have, you know, ignored the opportunity to, to minister to her. And yet that's exactly what God had planned for that moment. And so I think there's some value in, in everything that we do. You know, even when I pray, I, I, I'm in a lot of meetings with a lot of people all over the world. And a lot of times there are agendas for those meetings. And one of the things I always pray as we b- begin those meetings is God, let this be about your agenda and bring us into what you are already doing and what you want to do. It's not, okay, God, this is my agenda. Please bless it. Instead, God, what's your agenda and how can I be a part of it? And so that has become the guiding principle, of course, for my life, but especially for this time of year where I can reach out and say, God, what do you want for this year? What do you want for me? And you know, what is the word? You know, if you're kind of even confused about what that even means, sometimes it's one word. Sometimes God will give you one specific word to focus on. And so what I do is I, during my fast, I will start praying about this even you know, towards the end of the year, coming into the the new part of the year, I will start praying about this and, and asking God for wisdom and, and how to navigate and and have some strategy around this but sometimes it is one word and sometimes it can be more than word meaning like a passage of scripture or or if you hear that phrase in church like god has a word for you it's it's um maybe not just one singular word but a phrase or a passage that really is relevant to your life and and that has happened for both of me i mean one year i you know, I'm 42 now. So I was probably in like my mid to late thirties. And as I was praying and I was fasting about this, I was very confident that God had given me the word wisdom. And, you know, I was only in my mid thirties. I did not necessarily feel qualified to focus in on the word wisdom. And I, maybe it's just my own hang up. But for me, when I heard the word wisdom, I thought about my 80 plus year old mentor who has been in ministry for his entire life and is the wisest person I know. And when I think of the word wisdom, I just equated that with somebody that was older that has had more experience. Let's take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll continue discussing the rest of this episode together. Stay tuned. The exchange of opinions is essential to democracy. But today, many Americans hold radically different views, not just of politics, but of reality itself. Unity Talks, the new podcast from Vanderbilt University's Project on Unity and American Democracy, seeks to reintroduce evidence to the national discourse through conversations with experts on the important issues facing our nation. Co-hosted by John Meacham, Bill Haslam, and Summer Ali. Unity Talks is available wherever you get your podcasts. I found myself on a ledge, three stories high, at some condominiums, contemplating my life and struggling to understand my purpose. Have you ever found yourself on the ledge? My name is Billy Yates. I'm a caring father, mentor, and friend. In my new podcast, Billy and the Goat, I share the life-changing events that shaped who I am today to remind you that no matter how far you've fallen, God can help you get up and thrive. Listen now at lifeaudio.com. I, I second guess myself to be perfectly honest. And one of the things that I've learned over the years is when I'm discouraged or I'm confused or I'm hurt, that if I reach out and I pray for others, there's something holy about that. Serving when you don't feel like serving, that's a place where the Holy Spirit can work when we are being obedient despite how we feel. And so it's kind of like that, that, picture, if you can picture in your mind, if you are pushing somebody up a hill, you are also getting up the hill. And so by pushing somebody else up the hill, you're focusing on them and not so much on your circumstances. And that's just a a way that I live my life. But because I was in this place of, I don't even think it was discouragement. I was just second guessing myself. I was kind of just not confident. And I thought, you know, I'm going to just reach out to some other leaders that I know. I, I had worked in the children's ministry space for a long time. And so at the time there was a lot of children ministry leaders that I had spoken with at conferences and things like that. And so I reached out to three of them. And the first one I reached out to her and she's pretty well known. She's an author and she speaks a lot of places, she has a pretty big ministry. And I reached out to her and I said, Hey, you know, this time of year is a, is a year to focus and pray. And I just want you to know, I'm praying for you. Is there anything specific you need prayer for? And she said, wow, that's a really timely 
request or or message because I'm really struggling with something and I really need wisdom. Would you pray that God would give me wisdom? And I thought, well, that's weird. <laughs> but I, you know, I still was like, okay, well, that could have just been a coincidence. And then the second one, he said, you know, um, I'm really struggling with some family decisions I have to make right now. Could you pray for me to have wisdom? And I thought, okay. You know, if you don't know what a sacred echo is, a sacred echo is when God repeats something to get your attention. So for some people, it might be, you know, you hear a sermon on a Sunday and then you hear that same message on a podcast. And then later that week, you go to do your devotions and it's on the same passage. It's a little bit of an echo, a sacred echo that God uses to to get your attention. And so this is what I was experiencing was the sacred echo. And so then the third one came back and this was somebody who's, you know, travels globally, has this huge ministry, is all over the place. And he said, yeah, Rach, can you just pray for God to give me wisdom? And it was such a confirmation for me that it wasn't just God by his spirit putting that word into my heart, but he was confirming it through godly friendships and relationships in a way that they weren't even recognizing or they they didn't even know because wisdom was not their word of the year. It was mine. And I think that is a testimony to why we do need godly relationships, godly friendships around us. And, and to be perfectly honest, most of my godly friendships and relationships, they don't even live in the same state as I do. They're all over the, the country, all over the world. Um, but yet there is no time or distance or space when it comes to the Holy Spirit. God can work in and through us despite our location. Um, and I teach, I teach online all the time. So obviously you're listening to a podcast. So what I can say about that is that it is worth the investment of our time in those godly relationships. And then again, so that was when it was one word for, there's been other times in my life where it's been more than one word. It's been a passage or, or a specific word from scripture. And there was one year where I thought it was going to go in one direction, but instead what God told me during the fast was seek first the kingdom. And and there's a scripture that talks about seek first the kingdom of God and then everything else will be added unto you. I'm paraphrasing, but I believe it's in Matthew. But that phrase, seek first the kingdom, was the word that God gave me. And it did not make sense to me at the time because it was in January. And little did I know that later that year, there was going to be an opportunity to make some tough decisions and some ministry transitions. And One of the things that was really difficult for me in that season was that I was doing a ministry that I loved. I was really emotionally attached to the people I was serving and the role I was in. I had been in it a long time. I had gained some confidence. I kind of felt like I knew what I was doing, Um, seeing God do some incredible things. I was really attached emotionally, spiritually, physically even to this role. And yet when this ministry opportunity came available, the impact was going to be for thousands of people instead of hundreds of people. And as I faced that decision, I recognized that if I was seeking first the kingdom, not the kingdom of Rachel and not the kingdom of the church I was working at and not the kingdom of our finances and not the kingdom of all those things. If I was seeking first the kingdom, God's kingdom, and there was an opportunity to minister to thousands of people instead of hundreds of people, then it would be a mark of disobedience if I did not step into that role, into that calling. And while I still agonized emotionally over that decision, I walked into that new role confident that 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 is what God had for me. And I am confident still, you know, we're going on four years later, that that is exactly what God had planned for me. But God knew that. God knew that ahead of time that I was going to struggle with that decision. And he prepared my heart, even in that January. And and honestly, that that way of thinking, seek first the kingdom, that has become a guiding principle in my life. When I'm making decisions, even in the decision to join the podcast network, I I was holding on tightly to the podcast because I just felt like this is my thing that God has done in my life and me, 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 me. And, and God got a hold of my heart and said, Rach, it's about the kingdom and the impact I was making individually was great, but through the podcast network, I mean, their network is like 
over a million people. And so if I'm seeking first the kingdom, again, it would be a matter of disobedience if I didn't step into that. And so it's become a guiding principle for me, seeking first the kingdom, and then everything else will work itself out because the goal is keeping the eye on the prize and focusing on, on God's kingdom. And so again, that was not just one particular word, but it was a phrase, it was a word from scripture. And I want to encourage you that it could be something completely different. I mean, your experience with God can be completely different from my experience with God. But there are a couple things that I want you to keep in mind as you are approaching this topic. If this is something that you feel led to do, feel led to focus on. I want to encourage you that God will not give you a word that is contrary to his word. And what I mean by that is that the primary way that God speaks to us is through his word, is through the Bible. That's the primary way he speaks to us. So what that means is that the character and nature of God that we see in the pages of scripture is no different. Yahweh, God, is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, which means the way he operates, the way he functions, the way he loves us, the way he calls us to obedience and righteousness is the same. And so God will not give you a word that is contrary to his word. So if you are thinking, okay, God wants me to cheat on my spouse. Well, obviously not, because that is not in line with God's word. And so there have been times where people have said that. I just really felt like God, you know, put this other person in my life uh, and we have such a deep emotional connection and he's a Christian. And but No, that's not what God is calling you to do. It's not, he's not going to give you a word contrary to his word. And so when people say, how can I know if it's God speaking or it's really my own voice? That question a lot of times will be answered if you simply hold that up to the truth of God's word and God's character and God's nature. I mean, there are things that scripture does not specifically talk about, but we understand because of the biblical nature of God's spirit and God's presence and, and what Jesus has said about other things, it informs us. So for example, the scriptures don't talk about social media and cell phone use, but I know as a, as a parent that there are biblical principles that guide how I allow my children to use those things. And I can base my decisions on the wisdom that is found in the scriptures. And so that's what I mean when I say God is not going to speak contrary to his word. So what does that mean? That means that you have to start in his word. It should always drive you back to his word. And sometimes there's a danger where people just feel that God told them something and they're not backing it up in his word. I, I want to encourage you to, yes, yeah, seek the Lord and seek his voice and listen, listen for what he's speaking but then go back and see what scripture says about it. So that year that God gave me the word wisdom, I went through and I spent a lot of time in the scriptures reading about what biblical wisdom actually is. And there's a difference between what I thought biblical wisdom was and what actual biblical wisdom is. And so, yes, of course, I did lean into what I felt God was saying to me and those sacred echoes I was having, but I backed it up with what God's word actually said. So I want to just encourage you to be in God's word and to seek his heart and his face in those things and not just go with a hunch, but, but really be confident in knowing God says about a certain topic. He will not call you to sin. God will not call you to sin. Let me say that again. God will not call you to sin. And so if you are using this word of the year or this focus for the year as a way to justify your sin, that is not God. That is not God. So I want you to kind of just make sure that when you are leaning into something, it is in line with God's principles and his word. If you are still struggling a little bit to understand how this all works, one of the things I would suggest is, well, there's a couple of things. The, the She Hears Bible Study is a Bible study that I wrote that specifically teaches the color method of Bible study that teaches you how to get into God's word and to hear his voice through the scriptures. The second thing I would suggest is that uh, there's this whole spiritual discipline series that we did last year. I think it's 12 weeks where, and, and if you have been listening to the reruns, one of the weeks we did an intro and then we did the biblical meditation. That's a sample of what the spiritual discipline series is like. So you can go back a couple weeks and listen to that biblical meditation series to kind of give you a taste, or you can go back to earlier podcasts from last year where it's the entire series as a 12, 12 weeks. Each week we take a different spiritual discipline that focuses on learning how 
hear how to hear God's voice. That has been a tremendous help to most people. And I pray that that's a blessing to you as well. For me, if you're curious, for me, it's, it's funny how this happens. I thought that my word of the year for this year was going to be focus. In, in mid-December, I started really praying about this. And the thing that I kept kind of just, what was resonating with me was this word focus. And so, um, I, again, I don't want to set my agenda. I want to, to surrender to God's agenda. And so as I came into the early part of this year, I'm, I'm kind of just praying through and, and asking the Lord and, and he changed it. <laughs> In fact, focus was not it. And it's not that I'm not called to be focused. Of course I am, but instead he changed it to healing. And that is surprising to me because if you've listened to my podcast for any amount of time, you know that even when I wrote the She Hears Bible study, it was in a season of healing. It was, I call it my season of hiddenness where I had come out of public ministry and I just was kind of hidden away, tucked away in the season of healing. And I kind of felt like I was done with that. And I guess maybe healing is a process. Healing is something that's never over. We're never done healing. Um, but there's a couple different things that I think that maybe God is going to be doing in and through this podcast. I think I've been hearing from a lot of people about how the podcast has been healing for them. It's been healing for me. Um, and so I'm, I'm excited to see what God is going to do. And of course, I'm leaning into that. I'm leaning into that space. So what he has called me to do is to focus on healing. And so even already, it's been, I don't know, today I'm recording on January 4th. So it's been four days and I'm finding myself already using healing as a deciding factor with, with a lot of things. Healing, um, is this, is this something that's going to be healing to my relationships? The things I say, the things I do, the decisions I make, the food I buy, you know, all of those kinds of things, the, the financial decisions. Is this something that's healing? Is this taking me closer to healing or is this taking me closer to hurting? And already it's changed my shift in thinking. And so I'm excited to see what God's going to do. Um, I have had a healing anointing in the past and, you know, travel is opening back up where I'm headed to the Dominican Republic here soon and then Sierra Leone and hopefully Malawi. And so we'll see, we'll see what God has in store. But my hope is that pointing you in this direction will, will produce some fruit in your life that you will recognize that we have a God that does long to be involved in your everyday, in your life, in the details of your life and your relationships. But so often we don't allow him into that space. And so that's my encouragement for you, not just at the beginning of the year, but all year long, that you would lean into this posture of surrender, surrender to God's agenda, instead of your own. With that, let's pray. Father God, I thank you that you are a God that continues to pursue us, that you sent Jesus to die for us in pursuit of a restored relationship with us. Lord God, as we continue to, to strive to be obedient to the things that you've called us to do, God, I pray for clarity. I pray for clarity in our minds, in our hearts, in your word. I pray for my friends that, that maybe have it on their hearts to, to surrender their agenda to yours. God, would you meet them where they're at? Lord, we know that you are a God that meets us where we're at. So I thank you. I pray that over my friends today. And I thank you for the direction that you are taking this podcast and the way that you continue to just do things that are above and beyond anything we could ask or imagine. I thank you and I praise you in all things. Amen. Hey friend, do you feel like you need a little one-on-one? -on -one? My goal for the She Hears ministry, the Hearing Jesus podcast, all the resources that we have is to really help you learn how to hear God's voice so that you can be confident in your relationship with him. And if you're struggling to learn how to identify or even overcome the barriers that you have in your life to growth, I want to be able to walk through that with you. Did you know that I'm a Christian life coach? Maybe you're struggling with something and you need some objective biblical insight or opinions, or maybe you need to work through something that feels just a little bit too heavy to do on your own. I would love to walk through that with you and land on some practical ways to achieve that goal. And so I have some limited coaching opportunities. If you go to shehears.org, there's a section where you can schedule some one-on-one -on -one time with me. I have Mondays and Fridays open right now going into the new year. So I pray that if that is something that you need, that you've been praying 
praying about that it would be an opportunity for you to take advantage of some one-on-one time with me. And again, my heart is really to help you lean into whatever it is that God is calling you to do. I pray that that's a blessing for you. I want to take just a second to thank the team at Life Audio for their partnership with us on the podcast. If you go to lifeaudio.com, you'll find dozens of other faith-centered podcasts in their network. They've got shows about prayer, Bible study, parenting, and more. Hey friends, if this podcast helped encourage, empower, or equip you for God's call on your life, I would love it if you would head over to Apple Podcasts and leave me a review. That's the number one way you can support my show. You can also join our free Facebook community or Instagram page where I share inspirational tips, resources, and prayer throughout the week. Hey, I want you to know I'm praying for you this week. Know that you are loved, you are cherished, and you are His. The exchange of opinions is essential to democracy. But today, many Americans hold radically different views, not just of politics, but of reality itself. Unity Talks, the new podcast from Vanderbilt University's Project on Unity and American Democracy, seeks to reintroduce evidence to the national discourse through conversations with experts on the important issues facing our nation. Co-hosted by John Meacham, Bill Haslam, and Summer Ali. Unity Talks is available wherever you get your podcasts.